Hi there, my name's Denise, and I'm going to show you how to be really, really clever with Google Scholar. Let's start by using the readings set for your unit as a springboard. So here we are on Blackboard, and if you click QUT readings in your unit, you get something that looks like this. When you scroll through these, this one in particular looks like it might be useful. Notice that it's published in 2014. So let's see what we can do with this in Google Scholar. I've copied it. Here's Google Scholar. But instead of pasting it straight into the search box, here's the first really clever thing we're going to do. Click for the advanced search and this allows you to paste your title in as an exact phrase. I've also remembered that the author's name is Collard so I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to ask Google Scholar to search. It's found it, terrific. Let's have a look. So here it is Collard and Looney 2014 and this article has been cited by 125 people. The really clever thing about this is that by starting with this particular article, which was put into your readings by your lecturer, we know already that it's relevant and that it's scholarly. And because your lecturer chose it for you, you can feel pretty safe about going ahead. So let's click and have a look at these 125 citations. So here they are. If you look, you'll see that all of them, of course, are more recent than 2014, which is great. They won't all be relevant because people will be citing this article and coming at it from a lot of different angles. But if you scroll through, you're probably going to find something you like, like this one, for example. Let's click on this one. It was published in 2019, and I've actually gone straight to it, which I didn't mean to do, so let's go back. If I click to find out who cited it, I find that 12 people have cited it. Fine, great. And when we look at these, we can see that they're much more recently published, so some of these are in 2020, for example. When you look at these, it's very, very important for you to understand what is peer reviewed and scholarly and what is not. So if I go back to our previous list, you can see that there are books here. Now books are not peer reviewed in exactly the same way that journal articles are. But if you go and look at the books, you'll discover pretty quickly whether or not they're truly scholarly. With most articles, if you look at the title of the article, you can find out like this one, for example, is pretty clearly peer reviewed and scholarly. This one is too. So think about that. That's a very useful thing to do. The other thing that we can do is we can use Google Scholar to search for anything we like on any topic that we like. So let's use creativity. I've put it in here as all of the words. The other really useful thing about Google is that you don't have to worry about word endings. It will automatically go and find all the variations of the word creativity or creative, for example. It's also going to look for early childhood as a phrase. And because I don't want my scholarly works to be too old, I'm going to put in a date range. Let's see what we find. There are about 17,000 results. That's an awful lot. But the first few look quite interesting. Here you see books. Here you see scholarly journals like this. Great. You can look through them. If you get too many and you want to cut it down a little, you can always go back to the advanced search and say that you want your words to turn up in the title 
of the article and that will cut it down a great deal already, as you can see. So there you go. Two ways to use Google Scholar and be very clever. Firstly, by using the readings set for you by your lecturer. And secondly, just by doing the search that you want to do. It's really powerful. Enjoy. <laughs>